Father, please, please bless. Hi, everybody. This is Angelo Quinones, and you reach our ministries. Now, we are seeing in the text of uh, Zechariah chapter 2 that Jehovah sent Jehovah is indisputable. You can't dispute the fact that Jehovah sent Jehovah. Now, if Jehovah sent Jehovah, okay, that means that there are at least two persons to God. Okay? And so uh, this is a great proof of, of um, that uh, two persons of the Trinity uh, subsists, exist here. So there are more than one person to Jehovah, whether we like it or not. Yes, Jehovah is one Jehovah. God is one. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, Theos, Haste, Estin. It says in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 20, all across the board. Yes, Theos, Haste, Estin. God is is one. Haste means one there. And is that what I'm saying? Esther means is. It's in the third person. And also, uh, Theos means God. Now, over here, we're studying uh, the construction, the full uh, Hebrew construction of uh, of this uh, text, because we're trying to prove that Jehovah is speaking. And not only that, that uh, Jehovah sent uh, this Jehovah. Now, there's only one Jehovah, but there are th uh, three uh, persons, uh, uh, to Jehovah. You understand what I'm saying? Now let's check it out. It says over here, key for four. We read uh, we read uh, he Hebrew from right to left. And then, then it says, Ho, and that means thus. Ho means thus. Spelled out. Okay. Um, that's a cough. Okay. So it's spelled out uh, like, like K-H or a C-H and stuff like that. You understand? So that's like, uh, that's a guttural. And so the thing is, that's the deal. Ha. Okay, so ki ha for thus. And then we saw the wonderful word amar. Okay, and that says we saw the construction of that. And then we were then we began the the, the construction of the Tatagrammaton, and we saw that um, each individual uh, letter okay um, uh, means okay um, this. The yod means hand, H-A-N-D, or, or arm, like, you know, anything like touching the elbow, going down to the fingers. And then uh, hey means behold. As a matter of fact, the Paleo Hebrew is very strong. It's like somebody saying, hey, look, like that. You understand what I'm saying? And then, let me just move that out the way. I just get so many messages. And then after that is the vav or the wow, and that means nail, like a tent nail, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? And then after that is behold again. So I said that this could mean, I, I just, this is just me. I never heard it before, but I'm just saying um, that, uh, that I'm just saying that, that I'm not saying that, you know, I beat everybody to it, but I'm just saying uh, if I did, uh, praise the Lord anyway, but I am saying that the gospel stories in the Tetragrammaton, that's what I think. It's not gospel meaning what I'm saying, okay? But I'm saying it might be in the Tetragrammaton. Hand, behold, nail, behold, is the gospel message. Now, remember that that the, that the word Jehovah comes from Haya, okay? Which means to be, among other things, okay? And so, um, you know, Echyech is, is actually the first person form of Haya, and the Tetragrammaton is the third person form of Haya. He will be. Now, Actually, he will be is in the is in is is in the future. It's like it's saying it's like saying you know Jehovah's going to do something. Okay, as a matter of fact, you know, like when you read um like verse ten of this chapter, it says that Jehovah is going to dwell in the midst of his people. He did do that when he took upon himself an additional nature and dwelt in the body that he had. Okay, that he took. Okay, taking the form of Dulu, uh, a Greek word labon, which is a participle there in verse seven of chapter two of Philippians. You understand? I'm sorry that I speak too quickly. It's just I want to be—I don't want to be beaten by the clock, and I'm always, I, you know, that always does uh, beat me. But anyway, so this is the third person form of Haya. This comes from Haya, okay, uh, the Tetragrammaton. It's the third person form of Haya, okay. He will be third person. I am, okay, is Echyech. Nobody can say that of himself except for God. It's blasphemy to say, well, what about the blind man? Didn't he say um, uh, Echiak in the Hebrew New Testament somewhere? No. He says, um, Ani who? I am he. Now, who means he in, the, in, in Hebrew? Who means he? Not who is it, but just who. Who means he in Hebrew? Okay, you understand what I'm saying? 
And uh, the, new, the, 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 new, the, uh, the Hebrew New Testament that I have translated from the text of Susceptus by G.G. Collier and T. Frey way back in 1817, at least that was the published date, you understand? That says, okay, all right, Anihu. It doesn't say Echyak. The blind man did not say Echyak. Nobody's allowed to say Echyak except for God. And he said it in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Echyak asher Echyak. I am that I am. Only God can say that. Jesus did according to that Hebrew New Testament of 1817. And I have it right in my right on my desk. I have it right here. And another Hebrew uh, New Testament says that Jesus says, Echyak of himself, according to uh, John chapter Okay, 8 verse 58. Because the Jehovah's Witnesses can say, well, big deal, echo Amy. It doesn't really prove that he's the great I am. As a matter of fact, the Hebrew New Testament doesn't even say what the Greek Septuagint says, echo Amy Ho'on. So what about that, Angelo? Yeah, but I could take you to the he Hebrew New Testament where Jesus does say, ek, ek, of himself. And according to you guys at the tower, Jehovah's Witnesses, you said that Jesus only spoke in the Hebrew of his day and not in Greek. And I have two Hebrew uh, New, Te uh, New Testament that I could point out to you one physically that I could show you that he did, did say Echach of himself. So this is the third person form of, of Yaha, the Tetragrammaton. Now it says it goes on to say of hosts, he is uh, the Lord of hosts. I say, okay, Sabaot. Sabaot. Okay. Now what is this? Well, I'm under uh, 6,635. It's, this, it's the third to last letter on the top floor. You have two floors here, the first floor and the second floor, like in a building, right? So I'm under, um, over the, the words of hosts. I'm right there, okay? Right there. I'm beginning with a Y-looking letter that is not a Y. It's a T-S in Hebrew, actually. It's, the, it's a Sade. Say Sade. Sade. The Sade is a T-S letter in Hebrew. It's a combination of two letters, like in the word sports. Okay? And so that's just the deal. So it's a Y-looking letter, but we already have the Y, and it's at the Gamaton. Yeah, right? Yeah. So that's just it right there. So um, so the yo, so the so the Sade, I should say, okay, it's a T-S letter. And the transliteration, okay, um, is actually a T with a dot underneath it. But that means T-S when you see that, okay? Now, um, so that Y looking letter is a T-S in Hebrew, Sade. <clears throat> What's underneath it? The schwa, okay? The schwa, which is an E sounding letter like in the word lagoon. You see that in modern Hebrew uh, 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 manuals, okay? So we'll pronounce it like E for now, uh, 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 uh. Uh, le, uh, uh, schwa. That's a schwa. Two, two dots that are uh, sort of uh, um, vertical dots, not touching each other. It's, it looks like the bra the Braille B. If you read Braille like I do, I'm legally blind. Um, uh, you, you this this uh, symbol, the schwa, looks like the the Braille B, the B that's Braille. Okay. So you have uh, sa, and then you have a, a B. Okay, you have a B. Which is the bet? It means of house, actually in Hebrew. Okay, and so um, you have the comments underneath it, which we saw that that means uh, that's an A class, like in the word father. It looks like a T, but it's not a T. Remember, the Hebrews have two T's already: the teth and the tau. Those are two T's that are already consonants, so you don't need a vowel making that letter sound. Okay, so you have a T-looking thingy, but it's not a T, it's an A. It is an A, okay? Something that looks like a T in Hebrew is an A or an O. It can be an O also, but it's an A here. <clears throat> and it's transliterated into an A, okay? So, sa, ba, and then uh, the, um, the upcoming letter, um, Aleph, we saw that already in uh, the word... Okay, Amar, which means says, that's a silent letter. So you don't pronounce that, okay? Uh, the the next letter you're going to see, okay, is a uh, Vav or a Wow. We saw it in the Tetragrammaton. Now, um, the diacritic above it makes an O sound. Say O. What is this called? Holem. It is an Holem O class, okay? A diacritic. It's a diacritic. 
and it is an O class. So when you see a dot above a Hebrew consonant, you're probably looking at an O, like in the word Moshe, but the sheen dot carries that job out, okay? It does the job. The sheen dot can't act like an O class, like in, and it does in the word Moshe. So, you, you know, you don't need to write two dots, one for the, uh, the, the sheen or the sheen, and then another one for the O class. You know, that's just, you don't need that. All right, now where am I? <laughs> okay, the Lord of hosts. Okay, so you have Sabao, and then you have a T, sometimes pronounced S in some circles, in some dialects, sometimes pronounced TH. Okay, in some circles. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, over here is transliterated into a T. Sabaot. Sabaot. Okay, ot. And so that's uh, that's a T in Hebrew. The Tau. That's a Tau. That's one of the T's in Hebrew. And I what I'm saying. So when you're looking at something in Hebrew that, that looks like a T, do not pronounce it as a T. That's just a guarantee. You're looking at either an O class or an A class, mostly an A class. Sabaot. Okay, Sabaot. Um, the letters again are, okay, Sadi, Bet, Aleph, Vav, or Wow, and then Tau. After is the word, okay, Ahar, okay, Ahar, okay, yeah, so you have, uh, that's 310, and then that's almost, uh, that's the second last letter on the, on the top of floor, and let me check out the time here. And so the thing at the clock, you know, it's just like a, a, a you know timing thing. And so the thing is that um, this me this means after, and um, um, and so the thing is that that uh, this begins with an aleph, and then underneath it is a dash. That's an A class, like in the word hat. I said in modern Hebrew, okay, you don't have a distinction distinction between this A class and the A class we saw previously previously in the word. Uh, uh, of hosts, of hosts, okay, Sabaot, that's another A class here in Biblical Hebrew, that's an A ah sounding letter like in the word father, okay, A, and then uh, there's a couple of A's here, but this is the Pathach, and then uh, that's an A class like in the word hat, so there is a distinction in Biblical Hebrew, you understand what I'm saying? So you have the Aleph plus the, the A class like in hat, which is a little hyphen sign or dash, it looks like a minus, that's an A, and just say at. And then the second um, letter to the left of the Aleph, which looks like an X, it's not an X, it's a silent letter. Okay, actually, uh, by the way, this letter Aleph designates a Greek manuscript of the of the, of the Greek New Testament. Sinaiticus, Sinaiticus, or Sinaiticus, manuscript 01, is designated by this Hebrew letter. Okay, this is the symbol for that Greek manuscript, which is a 4th century uh, manuscript. The 300s, okay? Seca, 330 AD. The next letter is a Heth. Heth. Okay, it's a Heth. And the thing is that it's a CH. It's a guttural letter. <clears throat> I know it looks like the hey, like in the Tatagrammaton, but it's not It's not an H. Okay, this is a, this is a, they have hey, H over here with a dot. This is really a CH letter. Okay. So that's just a deal. So the thing is that you have a a the pathach underneath this letter also. So it's a ha, and there's an r finalizing this word, which is the resh. It's an opposite. It's an opposite side looking r, isn't it though? So that's kind of neat. That it, it looks like an r, but it's just pointing the other way. I'm at three ten. So a ha, okay, a a ha. So that's after the glory kabod actually okay doxa in, in in greek but over here is kabod now this is the same word recorded for uh, that 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 they saw the glory of um of jesus kabod you know and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us tabernacled among us and we beheld his kabod in the hebrew new testament the kabod of jesus you understand you understand what i'm saying the same hebrew word kabod and by the way the kabod the glory of, of of yahweh filled the tabernacle and moses couldn't even enter it that was a picture that he was going to dwell in a human body for all the fullness of the godhead dwell in him somatikas bodily 
This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to this Yahweh. Okay, and I will see you in my next study. Thank you.